셋, 별. So before anything else, what is the environmental crisis? Kung maalala natin, may mga balita tungkol sa bilang wildfires at pagkatunaw ng yelo na naging effect ng global warming at man-made pollution. Ito ay ang mga halimbawa ng environmental crisis. According to Taylor, environmental crises are distinguished by rapid and largely unexpected changes in environmental quality that are difficult if not impossible to reverse. So, what are the causes of the environmental crisis? So, later on, ito number one, other reporters will discuss the 13 biggest environmental problems na kinakaharap ng mundo natin. So, second question, do humans causes of the environmental crisis? Yes, impacts from human activity on land and in the water can influence ecosystem. For example, overpopulation. It leads to deforestation, decrease in biodiversity, and more pollution na mas makakatrigger sa climate change. Next one is correlation of global warming and climate change. As we all know, global warming refers to the heating up of the planet due to holes created on the ozone layer. The ozone layer protects our planet from harmful UV rays that the sun emits. So, uh, climate change is a long-term change in the average weather. Ibig sabihin dito, nakakaranas ang ibang part natin ng paiba-ibang weather. So, for example, yung melting ng glaciers na nakaka-apekto rin sa mga animals na, na naninirahan rito dahil ito yung kanilang habitat like polar bears. So, don't worry, mas ma-elaborate ito mamaya. And first things first, we need to embrace this quote that there is no planet B. So what is our plan B? What are we going to do for the sake of our planet Earth? Next naman po ay ang the world's leading environmental problem. And dito po yung mga problema na kinakaharap ng environment na pwedeng makasira dito. Una po ay ang the ang the depredation. Yung depredation po ay ang pagkasira ng environment dahil sa mga pollution. Siyempre, ang pinakaunang cause ng mga pollution na naranasan natin ay man-made like pagtatapon ng ibang tao ng mga basura sa ilog o kaya sa kung asaan man tapos parang nagkakaroon ng smell pollution na nagkakos para hindi maliguan or mapuntahan in which resource na makontaminate ng germs dahil ransak na yung ilog or yung lugar. Next naman po is yung changes in global weather patterns. This topic naman, di ba nagugulat na lang tayo sa init ng panahon na hindi naman natin karaniwang naranasan. At isang malinaw na halimbawa nito ay ang pagtunaw o pagkalusaw ng ice caps. Tapos madalas sa panahon ngayon na kahit unting ulan lang, makararanas na tayo agad ng matinding pagbaha lalo na sa mga lugar na mababa. The third one naman po is yung overpopulation. Ang overpopulation po ay nagkakost rin ng hindi magandang epekto sa ating kapaligiran. Isa sa epekto nito ay ang pagde-develop sa mga agricultural lands to and industrial land na nagiging sanhi para magkaroon ng erosion sa paligid na isa rin sa dahilan upang masira ang ating mga natural resources. The fourth one naman po is the exhaustion of the world's natural non-renewable resources from oil reserves to minerals to pot potable water. This topic naman po is tells na ang ating non-renewable resources ay nagkakaroon na ng exhaustion dahil sa malabis na pagkuha sa mga ito na nagkakos para ma-over-extract ang mga minerals in which in turn po nagiging sanhi upang masira ang mga lugar na pinanggagalingan po ng ating mga natural resources. Fifth living environmental problem naman po ay ang waste disposal catastrophe. Waste disposal is defined as unit for getting rid of and destroying or storing use, damage, or other unwanted industrial, agricultural, or domestic products and substances. Because waste disposal involves a myriad of processes such as collection, transportation, dumping, recycling, among other waste product monitoring and regulation measures, 
there are lots of problems associated with waste disposal that results in catastrophe. Halimbawa po ng mga problema ay production of too much waste. Most of the waste is toxic dahil nga po marami ng manufacturing companies sa iba't ibang bansa, pinakamalaki ang kanilang napoproduce na toxic waste. Landfills are problems as well. Regulations are based on vested interest. Ang mga waste disposal na programs po, lalo na ngayon, ay ginagawa ng profit-making venture ng mga malalaking kumpanya or kaya mga politika without sincere concern sa environment. Sixth leading environmental problem po ay destruction of million-year-old ecosystem and the loss of biodiversity. Biodiversity loss refers to the decline or disappearance of biological diversity, understood as the variety of living things that inhabit the planet its different levels of biological organization, and their respective genetic variability as well as the natural patterns present in ecosystems. So, paano nga po ba nangyayari ito? Ang ilang mga factors po ng biodiversity loss ay climate change, pollution, destruction of habitats, halimbawa po nito ay soil pollution, at deforestation, over-exploitation of the natural environment, o kaya mabilis na pagkonsumo ng mga natural na resources na hindi naakma sa kanilang natural regeneration. 7 is the reduction of oxygen and increase in carbon dioxide. Saan nga po ba nagmumula ang oxygen? Photosynthesis is the process through which plants convert sunlight and water into oxygen. Ang mga main sources naman po ng carbon dioxide ay fuel combustion activities, industrial processing, and natural gas processing. Ibig sabihin lamang po nito na ang pagbaba ng oxygen ay siya rin pagkaubos ng ating mga halaman at puno na dahil sa pagkasulog at iba-iba pang aktibidad ng mga kinagawa ng tao na nariresulta sa pagtaas ng carbon dioxide. Eight is the depletion of the ozone layer. Ano nga po ba ang ozone layer? Ang ozone layer po ay isang region sa Earth's stratosphere na nagkokonti ng high concentrations of ozone na pumoprotekta sa Earth from harmful ultraviolet radiations kaling sa araw. Ang pagkasira ng ozone layer ay yung unti-unting paglipis nito. Nadulot ng paglabas ng mga chemical na compound na naglalaman ng caseous bromide o chlorine mula sa mga industriya o iba pang gawain ng mga tao. Deadly acid rain. Ito ay resulta ng fossil fuel combustion. Toxic chemicals na galing sa pagputok ng vulkan at ang pagdami ng mga nabubulok na gulay at krutas, which is piling up sa garbage dumps or left on the streets. So ano nga ba ang mga epekto ng acid rain? The sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides are not primary greenhouse gases that contributes to global warming. One of the main effects of climate change, in fact, sulfur dioxide has a cooling effect on the atmosphere. But ang mga nitrogen oxide ay nakakatulong sa pagbuo ng ground level ozone. Isang pangunayang pollutant na maaaring makasama, makasama sa mga tao. Both gases cause environmental and health concerns because they can spread easily via air pollution and acid rain. Acid rain has many ecological effects, especially on lakes, streams, wetlands, and other aquatic environments. The effects of acid rain combined with other environmental stressors leave trees and plants less healthy, more vulnerable to cold temperatures, insects, and disease. The pollutants may also inhibit trees' ability to reproduce. Some soils are better able to neutralize acids than others. Ang mga deposito ng acid ay sumisira sa mga physical na estruktura, tulad ng mga limestone, nagusali, at mga sasakyan. And when it takes the form of inhalable fog, acid precipitation can cause health problems, including eye irritation and asthma. So, sa water pollution naman, it arises from industrial community waste, residues seeping into the underground water tables, rivers, and seas. Water pollution occurs when harmful substances, often chemicals or microorganisms, contaminate a stream, river, lake, ocean, aquifer, or other body of water, degrading water quality and rendering it toxic to human or the environment. 
this widespread problem of water pollution, pollution is jeopardizing our health. And safe water kills more people each year than war and all other forms of violence combined. Meanwhile, yung ininom natin tubig or finit. Mababa sa 1% of the Earth's fresh water is actually accessible to us. Without action, the challenges will only increase by 2050 when global demand for fresh water is expected to be the one-third greater than it is now. So when water pollution causes an algae bloom in a lake or marine environment, the proliferation of newly introduced nutrients stimulates plant and algae growth, which in return reduces oxygen levels in the water. So, wakakulangan ng oxygen mas kilala sa eutrophication, suffocates plants and animals and can create dead zones. Where waters are essentially devoid of life, in certain cases, this harmful algae blooms can also produce neurotoxins that affect wildlife from whales to sea turtles. So, in order to thrive, to have uh, healthy ecosystems, we should rely on a complex web of animals, plants, bacteria, and fungi, all of which interact directly or indirectly to each other. Harm to any of these organisms can create a chain effect, imperiling entire aquatic environments. Sa urban sprawls naman, uh, ito yung nagko-continue sa pag-expand as a city turns into a megalopolis destroying farmlands, increasing traffic, gridlock, and making smog cloud a permanent urban fixture. So, ito yung expansion of poorly planned, low-density, auto-dependent development, which spreads out over large amount of land, putting long distances between homes, stores, and work, and creating a high segregation between residential and commercial uses with harmful impacts on the people living in these areas and the ecosystems and wildlife that have been displaced. Urban sprawl has many negative consequences for residents and the environment, kaya ng higher water and air pollution. Nag-increase din siya ng traffic fatalities and jams, loss of agricultural capacity, pagdami ng car dependency, mas mataas na tax, increased runoff into rivers and lakes, Harmful effects on human health, including higher rates of obesity, high blood pressure, hypertension, and chronic diseases, increased flooding, decrease in social capital, and loss of natural habitats, wildlife, and open space. In its path, urban sprawl consumes immeasurable ac acres of forests, farmlands, woodlands, and wetlands, and its way leave vacant storefronts, boarded up houses, Closed businesses, abandoned and usually contaminated industrial sites, and traffic congestion, which can stretch miles from urban centers and is creating a hidden debt of unfunded infrastructure and services, urban decay, social dysfunction, and environmental degradation. Pandemics and other threats to public health. It arises from waste mixing with drinking water, polluted environments that becoming breeding grounds for mosquitoes and disease-carrying rodents and pollution. As health systems around the world struggle to, struggle to respond to their coronavirus disease na nangyari noong 2019 up to now, it is still, um, we're still recovering from it. The, the crisis has brought into sharp focus several important global environmental health. It is becoming clear that environmental and climate factors help shape the landscape within which COVID-19 proliferates around the world, influencing the public health response to the pandemic and interacting with existing environmental health, health disparities. A radical alteration of food systems demand. Uh, because of genetic modification in food production, global food production threatens climate stability and ecosystem resilience. It is the major driver of environmental degradation and transgress transgression of planetary boundaries. So overall, 
the consequences are serious. A radical transformation of the global food system is urgently needed. This is one of those moments when we should consider an interconnected, systematic transformation to ensure a balance that can safeguard our priorities of health, food security, and employment when this crisis is over and the health of the planet at the same. With all the information available sa atin, dapat nating ma-realize na ngayon ay kailangan natin ma-maintain ang sustainability kasi kailangan natin to sa sistema para gumana yung real chain of transmission. Sa pag-advance ng ating society, dapat, dapat din natin ma-realize na dapat natin i-anchor sa base, yun nga yung sustainability. So, yung system flows as a true, true chain of transmission. Para na safeguard naman natin yung priority of feeding sa buong mundo at para magkaroon tayo radical transformation nga of the global food system, the systematic change, kailangan natin mag-produce ng on-paying resources, on-paying, uh, on-paying yung kalat that will change our way of thinking and consumption. We should incorporate sustainability principles then within agri-food sector and complement and integrate with other areas of knowledge that are very different from those previously followed in our food production. Man-made pollution Pollution is the introduction of harmful substances into the natural environment. Yung harmful substances ay tinatawag na pollutants. Pollutants can be natural, such as volcanic ash. They can also be created by human activity, such as trash or runoff produced by factories. There are two categories related to pollution, natural and man-made pollution. But we will be focusing more on man-made pollution. Natural pollution happens naturally and won't significantly affect our lives because of its capacity for recovery. While man-made pollution is difficult to eliminate and is brought on by human activity. What causes pollution? How does man pollute the earth? By burning fossil fuels, overusing chemicals and pesticides, and generating sewage runoff, humans pollute the air, land, and as well as the sea. There are many factors that cause pollution. Even yung simple pagtapo natin ng isang maliit na balat ng candy, it can affect our environment. Man-made pollution. Man-made pollutants can threaten human health and compromise the natural ecosystem and environment. Man-made pollution is generally a byproduct of human actions such as consumption, waste disposal, industrial production, transportation, and energy generation. So from the word itself, man-made or human-made, gawa ng tao or gagawa ng tao. This category focuses on what humans do to our environment. This is the types of man-made pollution. Uh, first is air pollution. Second is water pollution. Third is oil pollution. And fourth is radioactive pollution. So, air pollution, um, it occurs when harmful chemicals or particulate matter like dust, usok, sunog, at iba pa na nasa at- ating atmosphere nagawa ng mga tao galing sa transportation, factory, at etc. Dahil ito ay matuming, hangin, it can damage human and animal health as well as the natural environment. Second is the water pollution. Um, Water pollution occurs as bodies of water like oceans, lakes, rivers, streams, aquifers, and atmospheric water become contaminated by man-made waste substances. Ito ay kalad na makikita sa anumang anyo ng tubig kaya it causes water pollution um, dahil sa pagtapo ng mga plastics o ano, any kinds of trash na pinaproduce ng mga tao dahil dito nasisira ang ating environment and also our health dahil sa dumi na ating makukuha from mabakong hangin at maduming tubig na maaaring mainom ng mga malhirap o kapus palat na tao. Third is the soil pollution. Um, it also called as land pollution. Uh, it occurs as harmful man-made substances leach into the soil, typically caused by industrial activity, um, agricultural chemicals, or improper disposal of waste. Example ay ang pagminina. 
At katulad ng any types of pollution, malaking epekto ito sa health and environment such as soils biodiversity and reduces soil organic matter. Maaring mag-cause ito na hindi masaganang pagtubo ng puno at mga panahin. And last is the radioactive pollution which can result from the improper disposal of nuclear, nuclear waste the accidental discharge of core material from a nuclear power plant or detonation of a nuclear explosive device have a large effect to the human and animal, especially to the environment. One of the example of this ay yung bombs at nuclear missiles, so yung mga particles sa air na galing sa pagsabog ay maapektuhan sa health ng tao and which it result to soil reaction together with the various nutrients that can cause the nutrients to be lost, making the soil highly toxic and infertile. Ten of the world's biggest man-made disasters, the Amberfantelirus Leap, the Severa Disaster, Chernobyl Meltdown, Montana Asbestos Clouds, the Deepwater Horizon Oil Spill, the Bokong Disaster, the Siduardio Mud Volcano, the North Pacific Garbage Patch, Californian wildfires, the Jilin chemical plant explosion. These events or disasters are mostly from or caused air pollution to various places. Some of these disasters ay nakaka-apekto from one country to another. Sobrang lala ng epekto not only sa environment, but pati sa health and livelihood ng all living things within or near that area. In Metropolitan Manila, 37% or 4 million of the population live in slum communities, areas where the effects of urban environmental problems and threats of climate change are also most pronounced due to their hazardous location. Poor air pollution and solid waste management, weak disaster risk management, and limiting coping strategies of household. Ang most affected ng pollutions na nabanggit kanina is yung mga nas nasa slum communities or yung mga tao na near or prone sa disasters. And in fact, yung mga kapuspalad or underprivileged residents yung mas naapektuhan at nahihirapan na makarecover sa mga health problems na nasagap from pollution. Their low income and poverty already put them at a disadvantage by not having the resources to afford good health care, to live in unpolluted areas, to eat healthy food, etc. There are three effects of man-made pollution. First, making a hole in the ozone layer. Second, health and life of the people. And third, harming animals and plants. The hole in the ozone layer is caused by air pollutants. Chemicals used as refrigerants, such as chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs, contain chlorine atoms. Releasing chlorine atoms into the atmosphere destroys ozone. A single chlorine atom can destroy thousands of ozone molecules. Due to the fact na harmful yung chemicals, yung wastes, and other substances sa environment, unti-unting nabubutas ang ating ozone layer. From then, we might get skin diseases and other health issues. Mas umiinit yung earth kasi numinipis na yung protection natin from the sun. So, a tip lang, use sunscreen or sunblock every day to at least prevent ourselves na magka-skin disease and to be protected na rin sa iba pang issues na makukuha natin from direct sunlight. Second, it affects the health and life of the people. As I've said earlier, pwede tayong makakuha ng diseases due to our overly polluted areas. We can also get other health problems like asthma, cancer, etc. It also have a huge impact on our lives kasi we get the consequences of our actions. Yung tinapon mo nang basta-basta dyan sa tabi, babalik din sa'yo. Like flooding, yung mga tinapon sa kanal, lumulutang na maski diaper ay present. So this will serve as a lesson that we should take responsibility for our actions, like simply segregating the garbage. Last, wildlife can experience many of the same negative health effects of air pollution that humans do. Damage to respiratory systems is the most common effect on animals. Plants and crops grow less when exposed to long-term air pollution by damaging structures called stomata, which are tiny pores on the underside of leaves that allow the plant to breathe. 
This may also lead to or added to the factors concerning global warming. Ang global warming o pag-init ng mundo ay isang pangyayari sa ating planeta na atin ang naobserbahan mula pa noong pre-industrial period na taong between 1850 hanggang 1900s dahil din sa ating mga aktividad. Kasalukuyan dito ay ang fossil fuel burning na nag-increase ng ating greenhouse effect na nagtatrap na mga init sa ating atmosphere. Ang climate change din na tinutukoy ay ang pagbabago ng temperatura na nagbubusod din ng pagbabago sa ating weather patterns. Ang ganitong pagbabago ay maaaring namang natural dahil sa variations na ating solar cycle. The terms climate change and global warming are often used interchangeably. But climate change broadly refers to persistent changes in average weather like temperature, precipitation, humidity, wind, atmospheric pressure, ocean temperature, etc. While global warming narrowly refers to a rise in the Earth's average global temperature. Dahil sa climate change, nagiging mahirap tayain ang padron ng panahon at nagkakaroon ng di pangkaraniwang weather events gaya ng malakas na pag-ulan, super typhoon, matinding pag-ulan ng nyebe, malalang heat waves at matagal na tagtuyot. At dahil naman sa global warming, nagiging lalong mainit at mahalumigmik ang paligid dahil nagiging singaw o vapor ang mga tubig sa ilog at dagat. Bumibilis at nagiging mas malawak din ang pagtunaw ng mga bundok ng yelo kaya tumataas ang level ng tubig sa dagat. Nakalaunan ay maaaring magpalubog sa mabababang dako at magdulot ng pagguho ng mga bangin, buhanginan at dalampasigan. Big effects of global warming and climate change Glaciers have been melting every year since 2002 with Antarctica losing 134 billion metric tons of ice. There is a coastal flooding not only in the United States eastern seaboard but also in the Gulf of Mexico. Coral reefs in the Australian Great Barrier Reef are dying and the production capacities of farms and fisheries have been affected. Flooding has allowed more breeding grounds for disease carriers like the Aedes aegypti mosquito and the cholera bacteria. Since human-made climate change threatens the entire world, it is possibly the greatest present risk to humankind. So, ang paglala ng epekto ng global warming at climate change ay patuloy na napasisinayaan hindi lamang sa Pilipinas, ngunit sa buong mundo. Bilang mga katunayan, ang mga malalaking tipak ng yelo sa Antarctica ay yung tunting natutunan mula pa noong 2002 na nagdudulot ng pagtaas ng sea level. Sunod ay ang sukdulang pagragasan ng baha sa Amerika at Gulf of Mexico. Isa pa ay ang pagkakasira ng mga tirahan ng isda o ang mga coral reef sa Great Barrier Reef na nagdudulot ng pagbaba ng produksyon ng isda at pagkasira ng ekosistem nito. Ang mga sumunod at matinding pagbaha ay nagdudulot rin ng mga pamukaran na sakit tulad ng dengue, diarrhea at leptospirosis. Kung ang epekto ng global warming at climate change ay pang buong mundo, ito ay isang matinding babala sa sangkatauhan na bigyan nito ng aksyon at laging mag-ingat. A scientific consensus that global warming was being driven by emissions from humans that caused that economic activity and extension called Kyoto Protocol, signed by 195 countries. It tried to commit to limit their greenhouse gases. The four greenhouse gases mentioned in this protocol include carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and sulfur hexafluoride. Kita Dapan was average carbon dioxide reduction of 5.2% from 1990. There are 10 ways in combating global warming. First is, keep fossil fuels in the ground. Fossil fuels include coal, oil, and gas. We can do this through turning off lights, computers, televisions, video games, and other electrical equipment when we are not using them. We can also do this through buying equipment that uses less electricity and limiting the use of air conditioning. Number two, Invest in renewable energy. These include technologies like solar, wind, wave, tidal, and geothermal power. Renewable energy solutions are becoming 
cheaper, more reliable, and more efficient every day. Our current reliance on fossil fuels is unsustainable and harmful to the planet, which is why we have to change the way we produce and consume energy. Switch to sustainable transport, switching to electric vehicles, and minimizing plane travel. So, mas maganda pong gumamit na lang tayo ng bike kung malapit lang naman yung pupuntahan natin kaysa sa gumamit tayo ng mga motor or kotse na nakakapulyot sa ating air. Help us keep our homes cozy. Home should not be drafted in cold. The government can help households heat our homes in a green way such as by insulating walls and roofs and switching away from oil or gas boilers to heat pumps. Fifth, improve farming and encourage vegan diets. As we have previously explored, going vegan stops deforestation, soil degradation, and greenhouse gas emissions associated with meat production, helping to slow climate change and secure our global food supply. Number 6. Restore nature to absorb more carbon. For example, planting trees in the right places or giving land back to nature through rewilding its scheme. Rewilding is a progressive approach to conservation. It's about letting nature to take care of itself, enabling natural processes to shape land and sea, repair damaged ecosystem and restore degraded landscapes. Through rewilding wildlife's nature rhythm create wilder, more biodiverse habitats. Number 7. Protect forests like the Amazon. Government can stop them by making the law. The importance of forests cannot be underestimated. We depend on forests for our survival from the air we breathe to the wood we use, besides providing habitats for animals and livelihoods for humans. Forests also offers watershed protection, prevention soil erosion, and mitigate climate change. This is um example po nito is plant a tree, useless paper. So kapag ano unti lang ginagamit nating paper, edi less din yung makakat na tree. And we should recycle paper and cardboard. Like kung yung mga hindi po nating ginagamit na notebook like that na may mga pages pa pwedeng nating ipagsama-sama in that way, mas makakatipid tayo may recycle natin yung mga product. And last is Buy only sustainable goods product. Yun po yung mga pwedeng example to protect our, process, protect our forests like the Amazon. And number eight, protect the oceans. Avoid ocean harming product. There are many products directly linked to harming and endangered or threatened species. Unsustainable fishing method and population. Example po yung mga nagbibigay na, naglalagay ng mga da, da, na, dinamita like yung mga uh, fishermen na nagtatapon ng dinamita, mas mainam po na huwag natin gawin yon And avoid cosmetic that contains sharks quailing. Jewelry made of coral or the sea turtle shell, souvenir shell or conch, nautiluses, and other animals, and single-use plastic like straw and water bottles that can end in our ocean. Kapag po tayo pumupunta sa dagat, pwede naman po na yung mga kalat natin is... Huwag natin basta-basta tiiwan, syempre ayusin natin para hindi ito pumunta sa dagat. And in this way po, mas malaki ang matutulong natin kasi nga, um, di ba, pag naipon-ipon ang maraming kalat, uh, mas kawawa din tayo kasi tayo yung uh, maapektuhan dito in the end. This product support unsustainable fishing and threaten important species and ecosystem. Number 9, reduce how much people consume such as at our transport, fashion, food, and other lifestyle choices. Example ito, we donate or recycle whatever we can. And most importantly, we encourage conscious consumerism and buying reusable, reusable product in the future. Another example po is the 3R. Like familiar naman po tayo sa reuse, reduce, recycle, from donating to charity shop, to hosting swap parties with your friends, to selling locality, locally online. In this way, you will support your local community as well as saving waste from entering landfill. Di ba po may marami tayong mga gamit, ganyan, pwede natin silang i-recycle, ganyan, para mas makatipid tayo, di ba? And in this way po, 
makaka makaka save tayo shifting the basket of goods and services consumer from the higher emitting to lower emitting items for example living closer to work to work place to shorten one's commute and reduce the amount of transportation services consumed syempre kung mas malapit tayo sa sa ating workplace, minsan pwede na lang din nating lakarin, like, pwede na din maging exercise, makakatulong pa tayo sa ating environment, ecosystem, like that. And lastly, reduce plastic. Plastic is made from oil and its process is carbon and steel. Intense. Nakikita po natin na yung iba po, kapag sa mga groceries, di ba, na mas gumagamit na lang sila ng um, paper bag kasi mas matagal mat Kasi matagal matunaw ang plastic. And in this way, ma-reduce natin ang paggamit ng plastic. We must urge to co- urge companies to provide consumers with plastic-free alternatives and say no to single use of plastic such as straws, plastic cutlery, coffee cups, water bottles, and plastic bags, balloons, plastic wrap, produce, and take-out food containers. Kaya nga po, di ba, pag makikita natin, hindi na masyadong gumagamit ng, ng mga plastic. Like, meron na tayo minsan handbag o kaya naman yung um, paper bag. Yun na lang po yung ginagamit nila to, do, to reduce plastic. And in this way po, yung mga nabanggit kanina is ma-combat natin ang global warming. And that's all for our topic na environmental crisis, words leading environmental problems, man-made pollution, climate change, and global warming, and combating global warming. Thank you so much for listening to us. Meet our team. Aya Sabilog, April Datugan, Catherine Labrador, Maritoni Abangan, Rhea Fesindalu, Jomre Neil Mirador, Justin Quaresma, Nicole Dedicatoria, Marilyn Santiago, Jinim Jimim Jade Santos, Daphne Lomalu, Raymond Beso, and John Michael Perez. That's it for our discussion. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you've learned something.